This is 8.1a, graphing sine and cosine functions from OpenStax Algebra and Trigonometry. So this is going to be a little bit of review from the assignment that you did the other day, um, but I, I really want you to understand how this works. And so um, let's go ahead and look at what you did before. Um, so we can take the values of sine and cosine of angles on the unit circle and graph them on a coordinate plane. So now this seems a little weird because the unit circle is graphed on a coordinate plane. And then I'm saying we're gonna take those units and graph them on a coordinate plane. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, um, the values of the um, angles, whether it's in degrees or radians, it doesn't matter, and you plot that on the x-axis, and then you plot the sine or the cosine on the y-axis. And hopefully you, you saw how these are related as you filled in your table yesterday, and you, not yesterday, but in the previous assignment, and um, graphed the, um, and, try, and attempted to graph it. So what does this look like? Um, so if this is the a table of the values of the sine of various various angles right and we're just focusing on the special angles here right we have 0 and pi over 6 pi over 4 pi over 3 etc etc right so this would be in degrees it'd be 0 0 degrees or 30 degrees or 45 degrees right those special angles all the way to pi um, then we get the value of the sine of those and then we this would continue to 2 pi on your assignment you had to go all the way to 2 pi but then if we use these and we graph this row as the x-axis because that's the independent variable and then we graph this on the y-axis we can end up with a graph of the co of the sine of x and it should look like this. Okay, so you guys should have gotten something like this on your previous assignment where it, it's, um, we, it's a wave. We call this a sine wave. Okay, so hopefully you got something like this. Um, and so what we see here is that um, at x equals zero, remember this is the x-axis, then on the y-axis it's zero. And so that corresponds to this point here. You know what, I'm gonna choose a more eye-popping color here. Huh? Let's get okay so we'll do blue okay and then at pi over 6 which is not marked on the x-axis um, but it would be right here pi over 6 um, the sine is 1 half so we plot it up to 1 half at pi over 4 the sine is square root of 2 over 2 at pi over 3, it's square root of 3 over 2, and that would be here. At pi divided by 2, it's 1. And then we have uh, we have a reversal. It starts going back down, right? So at 2 pi over 3, it's square root of 3 over 2, and so on and so forth. And you can see that you get um, you get this wave shape here. So this is called a sine wave sine wave. Okay. So let's see what happens if we do cosine. So here we have the co the value of cosine for 0 to pi and we do the same thing. At x equals 0 we get cosine equals 1 so that would be this point here. And then I'm just going to do the ones that are easily graphable. At pi over 3 it's 1 half. So pi over 3 is 1 half, right there. Pi over 2, it's 0. At pi, it's negative 1. Oh, I missed one. This is easy. 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half, right there, OK? And so once again, we get this wave, this wave but notice it looks different. This is a cosine wave cosine wave, okay? Now, um, on your assignment the other day, I asked you to graph them together on the same plane, and so you should have gotten something like this, okay? Now, we have the sine in red and the cosine in blue, and you can see that they are actually the same graph, but they are just shifted horizontally. If we took the cosine graph and we moved it over 
by pi over 2, it would line up with the sine wave. And so the sine wave and the cosine wave, they look the same, but they have different starting points, right? If you're starting at, at the 0 on the x-axis, then sine starts at 0 at, in the middle of the wave, right? This would be the middle of the wave. But cosine starts at 1 at the top of the wave. So at the top of the wave, okay? So cosine starts at the top and sine starts in the middle of the wave. Okay. This is the fun part of trigonometry. I love this. I love looking at the graphs and how these all fit together. And so one of the questions I asked you on your assignment was what, what are the relationships between these two graphs? And so thinking back to the first part of the year, um, they are just transformations of each other. Remember transformation is a transformation is where you take one, uh, one gr graph or one function and then you can do all sorts of things to it. You can shift it vertically, you can shift it horizontally, you can stretch it, you can compress it, um, you can move it up or down, you can move it left or right. Well, that's the shift. Um, and so the sine and cosine waves are just horizontal transformations of each other and we're going to be exploring that and we are going to be doing some of those other transformations as well. So as we're looking at this, let's talk about the domain and the range of both the sine and the cosine function. So the domain, in this case, on this graph, we have chosen the domain of, um, of from 0 to 2 pi, but we've just arbitrarily chosen that. Is there any reason why we couldn't put anything in there all the way to negative infinity or anything in there all the way to positive infinity in either sine x or cosine x? No, there's no reason why we can't. So the domain is from negative infinity to infinity. And then the range, let's look at the range. Remember the range is, oops, the range is all possible values of y. Okay, so both of these have the same range. What is the lowest value that that the y can be? It's down here, right? Now normally on a, when it's just graphically given, we don't know if, um, if we wouldn't know if negative 1 is included or excluded. In this case, because we know sine and cosine values, we know that negative 1 is included. So it's negative 1. And then the maximum value is positive 1, also included. Okay, so sine and cosine of x have the same domain, negative infinity to infinity, and the same range, negative 1 to 1. Okay, as long as you just have sine of x and cosine of x, you can't go above 1 or below negative 1. Now, when we start doing transformations, that will change, but of the um, just the basic functions, sine x and cosine x, they'll never be outside of negative 1 to 1. So keep that in mind. So what happens if we continue to the graphs into negative x values and past the 2 pi? Okay, so what if we extend our, do our domain past what we had chosen before? So this is what you would get. Um, so this one, because it starts at 0, oops, let me switch to the pen. Because it starts at 0, we know that this is sine x graph. And because this one starts at when x is 0, it starts at 1. We know that this is cosine of x. Okay. And notice, um, so before we were just looking from here to here and from here to here, but notice we get that same wave pattern all the way, right? That same wave pattern continues and you can tell that it's going to continue forever, right? In both directions. Um, and so what this means is, is that these are periodic functions periodic functions. A periodic function is a function that horizontally repeats. So um, like I said before we, sorry, let me go back, okay. Before we were just looking from here to here, but then it repeats. Starting here, it repeats again all the way to here, right? I get the same graph from here to here as from here to here. Wow, that's a horrible bracket. <laughs> there you go. And then also going the other direction as well, this is the same graph. Okay, so it repeats over and over and over again. And the way we mathematically represent that is we say that f of x plus p 
is equal to f of x and p stands for the period. Okay, the period. So the period is the interval um, where where the uh, over which the repetition repetition takes place. So let me um, clear off some of this without clearing everything off. Okay, so um, the period is where you have one full cycle of one full cycle of the function of the graph. Let me fix this sine of x. So if we're looking at the sine graph starting here, right, one full cycle before it repeats again, it goes up and it goes all the way down, then it goes back and now I'm back to where I began. Okay, now there is a point where I cross over the zero again, but if I stopped it right here, then the next part wouldn't be a repetition of the first. So if I go all the way to here, then when I start again, it's a repetition. So that is, is repeated right here, right? And then I, it would keep going, but my graph stops um, after another, half, another partial repetition. And so the period of this graph is defined as the amount or the value of the x-axis over which that one cycle takes place. And in this case, it's two pi, right? Which is the measure around the circle. So let's look at cosine. One period starts here. So we're starting at the top of the graph, go all the way down, and then we end up back at the top again. When, if we start over, we'll be repeating. So here, the period once again is two pi. Okay, so the period is 2 pi. Um, every time you go 2 pi on the graph, if, whether it's positive or negative, you're going to end up with another repetition of that graph. So that is what the period is. So let's talk about uh, sine and cosine as far as even, odd, or neither. Just by way of uh, review, remember even functions can be reflected across the y-axis and it, they end up with the same graph. Odd functions are the same graph when they are reflected across the x-axis and the y-axis. And neither functions that aren't, or, that aren't the same when reflected either of those ways are neither. Um, if you need a refresher of that, let me know. I can refer you back to that. So let's look at these. Um, so this is the sine graph, sine of x. And so let's decide, is it is it even? If we reflect it across the y-axis, are we going to have the same graph? No, so it's not odd. But if we reflect it across the y-axis and then across the x-axis, would we end up with the same graph? Yeah, we would. So that means the sine function is even. Okay, now let's look at the cosine, cosine uh, graph, cosine of x. If we reflect it across the y-axis, do we have the same graph? Yeah, we do. Sorry, I did this backwards, didn't I? It's not not even. It's odd. Sorry, guys. This is where in class you would have stopped me and said, wait, Mrs. Clark. Okay, so um, when we get to cosine, we can reflect it across the y-axis. That means it is even. Okay, so it is an even function. Uh, when we get to tangent, we're not doing tangent today, but when we get to tangent, tangent will be neither. So we have one of each of the main, of the basic trig functions. So let's talk about the characteristics of sine and cosine functions. So we've already, we've already gone over these, but um, we're just going to summarize it in a box here. Um, they are periodic functions with a period of 2 pi. So they are periodic, which means they repeat over and over and over and over again if you go along the um, x-axis. The domain of each function is negative infinity to infinity, and that's true for sine and cosine. Notice with these, we're doing both at the same time, okay, because they, they have the same characteristics. Um, and the range is negative one to one inclusive. The graph of y equals sine x is symmetric about the origin because it is an odd function. 
and the graph of y equals cosine x is symmetric about the y-axis because it is an even function. Okay, so make sure that you understand these characteristics and understand why. Um, there will, won't be an assignment with this lecture. Uh, this was just foundational information. Um, applying what we learned previous to starting the working with the trig functions um, to the trig functions. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd love to direct you to some more resources.